Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme. So, and in this context, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the classification of the enzymes and uh, in detail, we have discussed about the classification of the enzyme into the six different groups. So, these are oxidoreductase, uh, transferases, hydrolases, lyases, ligases and isomerases. So, all these groups are constituting a very large number of enzymes and these enzymes are uh, you know playing a crucial role in running the different metabolic reactions. So, now the question comes when we are identifying a new enzyme which is catalyzing a particular reaction how we are actually going to give the name to that particular enzyme. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the nomenclature of the enzymes and what are the different rules which we have to follow while we are giving a name of particular enzyme and what are the different precautions we should take. So, let us start today's lecture. So, what you can see here is that we have the enzyme classifications and in the enzyme classifications, we have classified the enzyme into the six different groups, right. So, we have oxidoreductase, we have transferases, we have hydrolases, we have lyases, we have isomerases and we have the ligases and all these classes are being given to their respective enzyme commission number or EC number. But the EC number is one of the way in which the enzymes are being um, you know given some uh, kind of nomenclature. For example, if we have the EC number as 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, that is actually corresponding to an enzyme which is called as the lactate dehydrogenase, right. So, instead of writing the lactate dehydrogenase, we can also write the this as a name. But in practicality, it is very difficult to write the name of an enzyme like this, right, because it is going to be very, very cumbersome when we say that uh, and you, you, the conversion of pyruvate to lactate is being catalyzed by an enzyme which is, is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right. So, that is not the way in which the enzymes are being uh, given the name. So, there is a complete history in which by which the enzymes are being given the name. So, let us see what are the different ways in which the enzyme nomenclature is being evolved over the course of time. So, initially when the field of enzymology started, people have started giving the name uh, randomly or based on the source of the enzyme from where they have, the enzyme is being recovered. So, that is being uh, given like a trivial name, okay. So, the trivial name or classical example is like the pepsin, trypsin and uh, papain. So, uh, trivial names are the name which are popular people have say, uh, you know, but they were not giving any uh, classical information. So, these are important in terms of historical point of views, but they are not giving any information. So, when you see that pepsin, it does not give any information about the substrate of that enzyme, it does not give any information what reaction it catalyzes and so on. So, it gives no idea of the source from which the enzyme is isolated, it gives 
the uh, no idea about the functions or the reaction what it catalyzed and so on. So classical examples are trypsin, thiamine, pepsin and so on. Uh, then the second uh, way of giving the name is that it is based on the name of the substrate with the suffix as. For example, if we have an enzyme, if we have a reaction which is like the uh, maltose getting converted into glucose, right? And if we want to write the name of this enzyme, what we have to do is we have to remove this O's, right? So we can remove the O's and replace it with the A's. So if we do that, the enzyme name would be malt A's, right? Similarly, we can have the some more enzymes name like for example, if we have an enzyme which is degrading the uh, protein for example. So if we have an enzyme which is degrading the enzyme uh, protein, then the it is going to catalyze this reaction, right? It is the amino acid, right? Protein to amino acid. So what we have to do is we have to remove this in, okay? So we have to remove this and instead of this, we can just put the A's. So the enzyme name would be protease, okay? So we have A's at the end of the protein, right? So that is the way people have started giving the name. But with this, the problem is that it does not provide the information about the type of reaction, what it catalyzes, okay? It does not, so it is, it is fine as long as the, uh, the name of the enzyme is concerned, but that name, it does not give more information in terms of the type of reaction it catalyzes, whether it utilizes some uh, cofactors and all other kind of things. And then the people have also started uh, another way of putting the name that is the third way in which they are actually giving the name on the basis of source of the enzyme like for example, the papain. So papain is an enzyme which has been isolated from the papaya. But that also has many problems like it, it gives the source but it does not give any information about the substrate, it does not provide the information about the type of reactions and so on, okay. So then people came up with the fourth idea and the fourth idea is that they were started using the systematic name. Systematic name means with their, where they are started using the two words, one is so uh, one word is for the first word is actually for the type of substrate what it is utilizing and the second word is actually the is for the type of reactions okay. For example, pyruvate is getting converted into lactate right and this reaction is being catalyzed by an enzyme which is called as LDH. So the name is based on the substrate and type of reaction. So substrate in this case is lactate and the type of reaction is that it is catalyzing a oxidoreductase reaction, right? So that's why the name would be lactate dehydro genes because this is a dehydrogenation reactions. Now this is also having the lot of issues right uh, it also have the problem so that's why people have come up with the set of guidelines and the rules which has to be followed to give the name to a particular enzyme isolated uh, from any source or in, or what, whatever the uh, properties of that enzyme to catalyze some reactions. So what are these rules? These rules are rule 1, okay. So what is the rule 1? Generally accepted trivial name of the substrate may be used in the enzyme name. So when you are you giving the name of an enzyme, you should use the classical name of that substrate which means you are going to use the name as protein and standard name, okay. You are not going to use any other name like maybe the protein is being called something else in some other way but that should not be the case. Should be a standard name what we have to use in case we are using it for the uh, nomenclature of the enzyme. Then the rule 2 is that where the substrate is normally in the form of an anion, okay, its name should end in 
eight, which means rather than ik. For example, lactate dehydrogenase. That is the enzyme name of the enzyme, and it ends where the substrate's name ends in the eight. This means it is actually uh, uh, having a lactic acid uh, anion group, which means it is actually having a lactic acid. Uh, anion actually which is present as a substrate. So, in that case we are going to give the name as lactate dehydrogenase. So, we are going to use 8 rather than ic okay? which means we are not going to say lactic acid we are going to say lactate actually. So, it is not going to be called as lactic dehydrogenase or lactic acid dehydrogenase. Then we have the rule 3. So, rule 3 is that the commonly used abbreviation for the substrates for example, the ATP may be used in the name of enzyme, but the use of new abbreviation should be discouraged which means we have to use the standard abbreviations whatever we have been using for different types of substrates or even for the cofactor for example, ATP, NADH, NADP plus or something like that okay so for them it is there is a there is a flexibility that you cannot you can use them but it's not like you are using you are started using any abbreviation for any substrate for example if i am started writing glue for glucose right that is not allowed that is not allowed because you are writing it only for the sake of making it very simple for your own understanding, but this is not the standard uh, abbreviation for the glucose. So, that is what? So, you have to use the abbreviation like the ATP, NAD, NADPH, uh, coenzyme A and all that, but not like this. Then we have the rule 4 and the, what is rule 4? Rule 4 is that the name of the substrate composed of two nouns should be hyphen when they are form of the form the part of the enzyme name. For example, glucose 6-phosphate 1-dehydrogenase. Okay? So, in this case glucose and the 6-phosphate, uh, so it, the, there is a hyphen which is being put so that the uh, it is actually uh, you know when, when it is present of the part. For example, it, it can be written like this glucose 6-phosphate. right? But when it is a part of the enzyme, it has to hyphen and then it has to be written like dehydrogenase. Okay? So, we cannot write glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It has to be hyphen in between the name of the substrate and the dehydrogenase. Then in the rule 5, rule 5 is the use of the enzyme name of the descriptions such as condensing, condensing enzyme, pH of the enzyme should be discontinuous as soon as the enzyme catalyzed reaction is known which means if you have discovered a new enzyme in that case you can actually use these uh, you know then in the name you can say that it is a uh, condensing enzyme okay you can say whatever the way to describe this enzyme but once you characterize that enzyme you know the mechanism of reactions you know what are the cofactors are involved then these has to be discouraged because until you do not know you can actually be used these kind of uh, terminologies, but once you know the biochemical understanding of that then it can be done. Then for the rule 6 where the 2 acceptor is unknown the oxoreductase has only been shown to react with the artificial acceptor the word acceptor should be written in the parenthesis as in the case of succinate acceptor oxidoreductase which means in some cases when you are actually uh, you know looking at the reactions it is very un, uh, it is unclear that who is going to be the acceptor or electron acceptor in this case then in that case you can write this name of the substrate acceptor and oxidoreductase which means acceptor is unknown as soon as you will know the acceptor you will write the name of the acceptor and that is how you are going to write the name of the oxidoreductase. Then the rule 7, rule 7 says that the systemic name should have two parts name of the substrate and the process is specifying the name ending with the ace. So, in some cases you also write the 
uh, name of the uh, process ending with the A's also. So, these are the seven rules or guidelines what you are supposed to follow while you are giving the name of an enzyme. But as you know that the enzymes are being classified into six different groups and all these six different groups are actually having their own way of giving the name. So, let us discuss all these uh, in detail. So, the first enzyme sub uh, group is the oxidoreductase which is belonging to the EC1 and it is catalyzing a reaction where it is uh, taking up the uh, proton or hydrogen from the one substrate and it is giving it to the another substrate and that is how it this is the reduction reactions. In the other reactions it is oxidizing the substrate to form the oxidized product. So, it is basically a re catalyzing a oxidation reduction reactions right. And since it is catalyzing the oxidation reduction reactions it is actually having a donor as well as acceptor molecules as a part of the reaction mechanism and that is why the donor and the acceptors are very very specific or very very uh, unique to this particular enzyme. Okay? So, in this case uh, cofactors what you use is NADH and FADH2 and uh, classical examples are dehydrogenases and oxidases. Now, the, uh, how you are going to give the name to a particular enzyme belonging to the oxidoreductase family. So, to this class belong all enzyme catalyzing the oxidation reduction reaction which means the substrate that is oxidized is regarded as the hydrogen donor. Okay? So, the systemic name is based on the donor. So, you should know the, uh, the name of the donor then you should know the donor, uh, name of the acceptor and then it is going to be write as oxidoreductase. In some cases people also write the dehydrogenase. Okay? Uh, so, as I said you know the substrate that is going to be oxidized is going to be called as donor. This means you are first going to write the substrate which is always going to be the donor then you are going to write the semicolon and then you are going to mention the acceptor. In most of the cases the acceptor is going to be the sum of the cofactors what is involved in these particular reactions. So, for example, either it will be NAD or it will be uh, NADH or some other cofactors. Uh, and then you are going to write either the oxidoreductase or dehydrogenase. I have taken an example, for example, in this case this is a reaction where the phosphate plus glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate plus NAD plus and it is giving a uh, NADH plus 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. Okay? So, what you see here is that who is the donor. Okay? So, if you see here is that this is the substrate okay? and this is going to be the donor in this case. Okay? So, if it is a donor you have to you have then you have actually the two molecules you have a pi you have nag plus as an acceptor but in this case the acceptor is nad plus right so once you know that this is the acceptor so nad plus is a acceptor so okay so in this case donor is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate right and acceptor is NAD plus. Now, if I have to write the scientific name of this enzyme, then I will write is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate semicolon because this is the donor, right? And then I will write the name of acceptor. So, it will write NAD plus and then I will write oxido reductase or in some cases I can write also dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase is more popular compared to the oxidoreductase, but ideally the in the rules it says that donor, acceptor and the oxidoreductase that should be the name which is written. But 
classically we are using the dehydrogenase because it is basically doing nothing but it is removing the hydrogen so that's why it is written as dehydrogenase also the common name which is dehydrogenase is also been used wherever it is possible as an alternative reductase can be used okay oxidase is only being used so in some cases we write the instead of oxidoreductase or dehydrogenase we also write uh, oxidase okay in, we only write the oxidase when it is actually like this a plus o2 which means if it is only oxygen present there is no other substrate and there is a oxidation is happening which means it is forming this then only we are writing the oxid oxidase if it is doing both if it is doing the reduction reactions and it is doing the oxidation because whenever you do have oxidation reaction reactions one substrate is getting reduced the other substrate is getting oxidized right so in those cases you are going to use the dehydrogenases but if it is only doing the oxidations then you are going to use the term as oxidase right then in that cases the oxygen is going to be the acceptor so if it is a oxidase for example for example in this case only if you have glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate plus o2 giving some product then you are going to write like this okay you are what you are going to write you are going to write glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate so that is the sub donor right then you are going to write o2 and then you are going to write oxidase okay so you are going to write like this so that will be the way in which you are going to write the reaction where the substrate is being oxidized by the enzyme now let's move on to the second uh, class so second class is the transferase which is belonging to the ec class 2 and it catalyzes the transferase reaction so ab plus c is going to give you a plus bc and the cofactor is magnesium or manganese and coenzyme the enzyme this is the biggest uh, you know class in the enzyme uh, class and the it normally transfers the methyl groups so basically in this case uh, you are actually have to focus only the group what it is actually going to transfer and that's why based on taking that into account you can be able to give the name of the different enzyme what is belonging to the transferases so how you're going to write the name of enzyme for example uh, so transferases are enzyme transferring a group a methyl group or a glycosyl group from one compound so the compound from which it is actually going to take the methyl group that is going to be considered as donor and the compound what is going to receive this particular group is going to be called as acceptor so just like as we have discussed about the oxidoreductase class here also there will be a donor and there will be an acceptor okay so uh, you have to just identify the donor and you have to identify the acceptor and then you can be able to write the name for example uh, so the systemic name is going to be follow this for, uh, formula donor semicolon acceptor transferase okay so for example this is the reaction where the methylamine plus l glutamate giving you the ammonia and n methyl glutamate okay so this is the reaction what it is being catalyzing so in this case basically what is happening is that there is a methyl group what is being taken up from the l -meth uh, methylamine and that's how it is actually forming the n methyl l glutamate okay so this means this is going to be the donor right and this is going to be the acceptor and the transferase okay so in some cases you also write what group it actually transfers as well right so if i write the name of this enzyme it will say methylamine semicolon l glutamate methyl transferase okay so what it says is that l glutamate has taken a methyl group from the methylamine okay and that's why 
you see the enzyme name itself provides a lot of information. It provides the information what kind of reaction it catalyzes because it has a transferase at the end. Then it also says what are the different components because if you are looking at this name itself, you can be able to write this whole reactions and that is why people are going with this uh, systemic name of writing the different enzymes. Now, we will talk to the third group and the third group is the hydrolysis which is belonging to the EC class 3 and it catalyzes a degradation reaction which means the formation of two products from the substrate by hydrolysis using the water which means if this is substrate AB it reacts with water in the presence of the enzyme then it is actually going to call the AOH plus BH. Okay? Classical examples are lipases, amylases, peptidases and phosphatases. How you are going to write the name of the hydrolysis? So, these enzyme catalyzes the hydrolytic cleavage of CO, CN, CC and all those bonds okay, including the phosphoric and hydride bonds. So, systemic name is substrate hydrolase which means substrate hydrolase. Okay. So, the common name in many cases formed by the name of the substrate with the suffix 8. It is understood that the name of the substrate with this suffix mean a hydrolytic enzyme. For example, protein giving uh, amino acid, right. So, if I have to write the name of this, what I will do is I will just do take this and I will add the S, okay. So, that will be protease, okay. So, this is the simplest class, simplest class where you can actually have, you do not have to identify the donor, acceptor and all that and you just take the substrate name and then you put the H and that is actually going to give you the name of the enzyme. Here I will take the some examples from the buccal cavity or from the elementary canal which is actually the uh, full of uh, you know protease for of the uh, hydrolytic enzymes. So, for example, if the substrate is maltose and if it is degrade getting degraded right, then the enzyme name is maltase. So, what I did is I took the malt then instead of O's I put the ace. So, that is the enzyme name. Similarly, if I have the fat and it is getting converted into fatty acid, so fat is also called as lipid right. So, I can just write lip right and ace. So, I have taken this and I have put the ace. Similarly, for the protein when it is getting converted into protein uh, uh, peptones, so what I will do is I will take this much and then I will put the ace. So, I will put protease. For even for DNA and RNA, so if it is DNA, then what I will do is I will and here you see I have taken the abbreviation. I have not taken the full name of DNA because that, that kind of abbreviation is allowed. So, what will be the name of the enzyme DNA ACE. So, I have removed this A and I have put ACE actually. If it is RNA, then it is going to be RNAs, RNAs, okay. Uh, similarly, you can have nucleotidase, you can have the uh, even other kind of amino acid, uh, other kinds of enzyme as well. Now, let us go to the next class. So, next class is the lyase, which is belonging to the EC class 4 and it catalyzes the non-hydrolytic degradation of the chemical bond or the non-hydrolytic addition or the removal of group from the substrate. Uh, classical example is this reaction what is going to be catalyzed right which is a decarboxylation reaction right. So, decarboxylation reaction examples are pyruvate decarboxylase. For lyase there are set of rules lyase are enzyme which are cleaving the CC, CO, CN and other bonds by eliminating leaving the double bond ring or converting or adding the group to the double bond. The systemic name is formed according to the pattern like the substrate then followed by the group and dash you are going to write the lyase. The hyphen 
in the lies case the hyphen is very important part of the name and to avoid confusion should not be emitted for example hydrolyas okay hydrolyas if you don't put the hyphen then it will become hydrolyas right and that will give the false impression that it is actually a hydrolytic enzyme okay which means it is utilizing the water but in it is not like that it is actually a uh, lyase actually instead of the uh, protease or some other kind of things okay so uh, hydrolyase okay so that hyphen is very important in the common name the expressions like the decarboxylase aldolase dehydratase uh, because decarboxylase means the enzyme which removes the carbon dioxide or aldolase means the enzyme which actually degrades the aldehyde or in some case of dehydratase which is actually going to remove the water are also very commonly being used. For example, the pyruvate decarboxylase, right? So, pyruvate that is the substrate, right? And the decarboxylase is we have actually clubbed the group as well as the lyase. So, that is why it becomes pyruvate decarboxylase. In cases where the reverse reaction is much more important or the only one demonstrated, we also use the synthase rather than the lyase actually. So, you can imagine like this right, if A is uh, getting converted into B plus C right like that ok. But in some cases what happen is that B plus C is actually more pronounced it is a bigger reaction ok and it very rarely you will see that A is getting converted into B plus C instead B plus C is getting converted into that. So, in that case you will write A synthetase ok instead of write because this backward reaction is much pronounced then what is happening what is the product of this backward reaction that A is getting synthesized rather than A is getting degraded by the A lyase ok. So, in that cases you always write the A synthetase as the name of this particular enzyme because the enzyme is going to do the both reactions, but this enzyme actually catalyzes this reaction more efficiently compared to this reactions. Now, let us move to the next class and the next class is the isomerase ok, isophorose which is belonging to the EC class 5. And it catalyzes the intramolecular rearrangement reactions, isomerization changes within a single molecule. So, it actually changes the groups within this right and the examples are isomerases, mutases, classical example is glucose 6-phosphate isomerase. How are you going to write the name of this isomerases? So, these enzyme catalyzes geometric or structural changes within the one molecule, systemic name is you write the name of the substrate and then you write the isomerase for example glucose 6 phosphate isomerase so glucose 6 phosphate is the substrate so if you write the glucose 6 phosphate isomerase okay so this is going to be the name of substrate and this is going to be isomerase right so uh, According to the type of isomerase, sometimes they are also being called as racemiases, epimerases, cistran isomerases, isomerases, tautomerases, mutases and the cycloisomerases. So, depending on type of the isomerism going to be catalyzed by that particular enzyme, sometimes we also write that also because that gives the more information about the type of reaction it is going to catalyze because the purpose of writing the nomenclature is that it not only provides the name it also provides the type of reaction it is going to catalyze. For example, if an enzyme is doing the uh, you know if it is catalyzing the epimerases right. So, in those cases uh, we write the substrate and then epimerase. So, that will say that it is actually causing the isomerase, isomerism, but that isomerism is belonging to the epimerism class. Okay. Uh, isomerases, for example, if it is a cistran uh, modifications, racemiases, if it is a D and L form, epimerases, if it is a changing the optical uh, isomerism, 
and if it mutates, if it is a intramolecular rearrangements. Then we come to the next last class and last class is ligases or the EC6 that catalyzes the joining reactions is joined together the two molecule by the synthesis of new carbon oxygen all these bonds right with the simultaneously breakdown of the ATP. So, X plus Y plus ATP gives the XY and ADP plus PI the examples are synthetases. So, ligases are exactly the reverse molecule compared to the lyases. The name of the ligase is also going to be uh, very uh, you know follow the simple rule. So, ligases are the enzyme which catalyzes the joining together of the two molecule coupled with the hydrolysis of a diphosphate bond in ATP or similar triphosphate uh, molecule for providing the energy right. And uh, the systemic name of the enzyme is that you are going to write the substrate 1 semicolon substrate 2 and then you are going to write the ligase. Okay. So, in earlier edition of the term synthetases has been used for the common names. Many authors have been confused by the use of the term synthetases and the synthase okay. and because of that this particular type of systemic name is been written where you are going to write the substrate 1 semicolon substrate 2 and then ligase. Okay. If the substrate 1 and substrate 2 are same for example, if there is a ligase which is joining the DNA molecules one DNA molecule to another DNA molecule in that case the substrate 1 is also going to be DNA substrate 2 is also going to be DNA. So, in that case we normally omit either of these substrate and we write DNA ligase right. So, that is a common name what common uh, practice what people do actually if it is the RNA if it is the RNA DNA like that. Okay. Consequently, the NCOIB decided in 1982 to abandon the use of synthetase for common names and for to replace them with the name of the type XY ligase. Okay. So, this XY ligase name is more acceptable by the scientific community. So, this is what I was talking about. If you have the DNA in both the parts like substrate 1 is also DNA, substrate 2 is also DNA, then in those cases you are going to write the name of the enzyme as DNA ligase right. But in those cases where you have the two substrate like A and B then you are going to write A B ligase ok or. So, this is all about the uh, nomenclature of the enzymes what we have discussed we have discussed about the discrete rules and guidelines what you are supposed to follow when you are going to give the name to a particular enzyme. And then we have also discussed about the systematic pattern which suppose which you have to follow to give the name to a particular enzyme class. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.